In this episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief, I sit down with Irving to talk all about Bunny Stasis, a card game for you, your friends, and your family. So hang on until after these sponsors and Kickstarter Corner to hear our discussion about this game. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by New Comet Games and their game Inner Sanctum, which is a set collection card game of secret societies in which you be the first to reach the seventh level and earn your right to enter the Inner Sanctum. They're only a short ways away from their goal with less than 70 hours to go. You want to hear more about it? Go listen to our episode where we sat down with Ben in update number two of their campaign titled Inner Sanctum One Week In and you can find out all about it as I sat down with the designer. So check out Inner Sanctum ending Thursday the 24th of January and help it become a reality. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is also proudly being powered by Born to Serve, a super powered game of tabletop service. It's a tabletop game for two to five jobless superheroes competing for the last job in town at the local restaurant. They have reached their goal since last time we talked to you about it. And there's still nine days to go to check out this campaign as it ends on the 31st of January. You want to find out how my chat with Diane from Shoot Again Games went? You can do that through the update number two as well on this one entitled 85% and new media about Born to Serve. And we're right there on that update. So check out... Born to Serve, a super-powered game of table service running on Kickstarter through Thursday, the 31st of January. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by Vixiv, the game of survival. It's a fast-paced strategic card game that pits players against each other in a race to develop the most successful ecosystems. There's 17 days to go to get in on the fun of this, and you can find our episode with the Creator Mastermind from Snipe Hunt Games in update number 3. So go listen to that, and then come back and check out the campaign that is going for Vix of the Game of Survival through Friday, the 8th of February. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by Dark Naga. Haunting of Haster, Hardback, 5e, and OSR. It's a hardback color omnibus edition of the Haunting of Haster modules, Dark Naga 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, as well as VTT maps and extras. Coming to you from Kevin Watson of Dark Naga Games, and you know what? Make sure you subscribe to Getting Geeky with Game Leaf so you don't miss our episode as I sit down with him this upcoming Thursday the 24th of January to talk all about it and then jump over and check out his campaign that's running through Sunday the 17th of February Dark Naga Haunting Poster Hardback 5e and OSR this episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is also proudly being powered by Lunatics Star Trackers Solar System and Lunar Lander it's an educational and strategic board game that combines real astronomy and historical space navigation. It contains a real star map, and I had the pleasure to sit down with Vincent a while back ago to talk all about it. You can go back in our podcast feed and check out Lunatics, see what we had to say with the creator, and then jump over and check out the campaign that will be running through Monday, the 18th of February. So definitely check out Lunatic, Star Trackers, Solar System, and Lunar Lander currently on Kickstarter. This episode of Getting Geeky with Game Relief is proudly being powered by Insured, the survival baseboard game. It's a game for three to eight players. Do you have what it takes to survive? Would you strategize and manipulate to win? Or would you leave it all up to fate? Find out in Insured, the board game that's currently on Kickstarter. And you want to find out more about it? I sat down with the creator of this game as well. And you can find that in update number three entitled Podcast. And then check out Insured, the survival based board game. Their campaign will be on Kickstarter through Thursday, the 21st of February. We'll catch you on the flip side of that interview as well. To give you a winner of our giveaway that we announced on our email to email subscribers. Never want to miss one of those as well. Jump over to be subscribed to our email over at our website, GamerLeafGo.com. Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf. 
the podcast in which one man strives to level up his geekhood and helping you do the same one battle at a time. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. Welcome to Getting Geeky with Gamer Leaf. So glad you can make it. Like I said before, we've got a couple games for our Kickstarter Corner segment, and then we'll dive into the interview and hang on, especially if you're an email subscriber until after the interview, as we're going to announce a new giveaway as well as the winner of our previous giveaway. But let's go ahead and see what's on Kickstarter or about to launch to Kickstarter. What is this place? What is it doing here in the Leaves computer? Oh, it's Kickstarter Corner with the Leaves. So, there's lots of great games launching the Kickstarter. This one will be on there for a little bit longer, and they're so close to their goal. It's Cartoon Crusaders Tabletop Card Game. In this tabletop card game, it's one versus one in which you play out of the same deck. In a game of skill versus luck versus skill. Are you curious what that means? I know I was when I sat down with Chad to talk all about it. And you can go find that easily if you check out update number five. Entitled Update. Interview with me in a new podcast in Getting Geeky with Game Relief. So definitely go give that a listen. And then if you like what you hear, come back and back the campaign. And let's make this game a reality. It'll be on Kickstarter through Sunday, the 27th of January. So definitely check out Cartoon Crusaders Tabletop Card Game. And this one's not yet on Kickstarter, but I have it on good authority that it'll be launching to Kickstarter tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Central Time. So you'll definitely want to watch out for Head Chef, the tabletop card game of food, fame, and fun. In this tabletop card game, for one to four hungry players, You will cook food, earn fame, and become the head chef. They'll be on Kickstarter for 30 days, so through the endish of February. So you'll definitely want to go ahead, and what you can do is you can click that link on the top left-hand corner of their Kickstarter page, which will say, Notify Me Upon Launch. That way, you'll find out when it comes. They just recently finished doing a giveaway with the giveaway geek you'll also want to watch there as they'll be announcing the winner real soon but anyways definitely check out head chef and you know what the first week has a flash funding goal if they fund in the first week all player score trackers will be upgraded from wooden cubes to chef hat meeples so let's go ahead and see if we can make that become a reality as well we now join myself and Irving in our interview that's already in progress. We'll catch you on the flip side of that interview, especially if you entered our giveaway via our email. You'll make sure you want to keep on listening. Plus, keep listening as we'll also announce another giveaway. Now, let's get geeky with Gamer Leaf. This is my wife, and this is her bunny princess. They are inseparable and love to be around each other. While dating, my wife warned me about this crazy defense mechanism that bunnies have called GI stasis. If her bunny got scared, stressed, or felt out of place, it went from irritated to agitated to stasis. The first time, we were able to feed her enough that she got better, but the second time was a complete disaster, and we had to make a midnight emergency room run. One day I was sitting thinking of all the misadventures with my wife and her bunny, and bunny stasis came to mind. All my fun and not so fun times at once. Will you be the last bunny standing, or will life stresses put you into stasis? Did that sound familiar to you guys? It didn't to me neither, but this is a story of Bunny Stasis, a card game for friends and family that's currently on Kickstarter, and tonight we're lucky enough to have on 
the creative mastermind behind this game, Irving. Is that correct, Irving? Is that how you fit in line with Bunny Stasis? Yes, I'm actually the uh, creator of the game, and I have a, had an amazing artist with it, with uh, Stephanie Brawl. Awesome. Now, before we jump into everything that's great about your new game, let's rewind a little bit, if we could. How did you get into playing tabletop board games? Irving? Oh, I've been playing uh, tabletop since I was young, young. Um, pretty much from the day that I saw, you know, you start with Uno and or Solitaire or, or whatever card game it was. I was fascinated by any type of game. Um, and then I kind of evolved there. I became a TCG player. Um, you know, I went to Yu-Gi-Oh, started with that when it first came out, and then went to uh, different games like Magic and uh, Final Fantasy, the card game now, is what I play uh, most of the time. So are you still doing the TCGs then? I do. I do play them all the time. Oh, boy. So they kind of sucked you in. Yeah, I never got into them. They they are entertaining to me. I like the competitive part of it. And then uh, I just like card games. I don't, I've always just had this fascination of just having, I guess they call it like an addiction as far to, to the uh to the uh what is it card crack oh boy yeah i can't say that i blame you my uh daughter uh what re opened a wound i had um i before i found out what hobby games are today i used to collect uno cards and we were going through my box and i want to say there's close to 30 different unos okay that's pretty cool uh uno is definitely one of the like i said one of the first games i started with so do you did you play any other unos or just the regular original uno Oh, well, you know, um, I started with Uno, uh, went to, uh, what was, you know, went to all the other board games that you started with a kid, you know, Monopoly, and then you had uh, Shoots and Ladders, you go from there to, uh, you know, Sorry, and, you know, it just led up to the line until I, I started becoming an, uh, an adult and teen and started getting into further games, um, you know, like Munchkin. And uh, with I play with my family. I play Chameleon and uh, Pandemic and uh, you know House on the uh, Haunted on Hill House. Okay, yeah, Haunted on the House on Haunted Hill. Awesome. And uh, was there a certain game that got you into the hobby board games or the TCGs or how did that transition go? You know, you st- when I was younger, I, I, you you watched the cartoon Yu Gi Oh, and that's pretty much where it started. Um, you know you have these cartoons that are throwing down these massive monster cards and you're like, Oh no, I want to do that. And you know, that's kind of got me started with the TCG world right there. Awesome. And then what about, you talked about some of the board games like pandemic and stuff. How did you get involved with those? Well, I got involved with those because uh, I, you know, I, I started having kids young and um, as they got older and you know, I wanted to play get car board games, tabletop games with them. Um, I tried to keep them away mostly from, from video games, but um you know, it was a good way that I could spend time with them and we could just do different games in general. And then you didn't have to worry about them wanting to collect all the cards as well? <laughs> Correct. You know, it, it, uh, the TCG world, unfortunately, is not a cheap world. Um, so if <laughs> keeping them in the, the tabletop world was, was, was much cheaper. Oh, there you go. So hiding it for convenient purposes. So that's awesome. Now, Word on the Street is... You decided to go around all that and make a game that's not a TCG. What can you tell us about Bunny Stasis? So Bunny Stasis uh, is a game that I made um, with my kids, actually. Um, I came up with the ideas, but all the testing that we went through in order to get the game, um, as far as rules correct, I did with them. Uh, The game is based on, it's pretty much the easiest way to put it, it's like a political Uno. Um, The purpose is to be the last bunny standing. Um, and uh, you do that by stressing out the rest of the bunnies, but you do it by playing stress cards or feed cards in order to keep yourself alive. Oh boy, but it doesn't have any political like voting and different things like that. No, the political part becomes because all the cards are able to be played. So it's a two to six player game. Um, and every card in the, uh, the, the entire game is able to be played against somebody else. So I can either feed you or I can stress you out. So you're either going to be uh, on my team until we get to the last two standing or against me. Oh, okay. So it's like one of those games that are semi-cooperative kind of? Uh, yes, because like I said, um, as you go along, uh, each person will draw cards and play a card. And then um, you're you're trying to be the last per- last bunny that's in, at the whole table. So if, if I'm going to feed your bunny, um, you know, I, I, I expect you to help me out later in the game. It's one of the things, it's not like it's determined in the rules, but it is one of the things that uh, you can easily, hey, 
you know, maybe we want to go after that bunny. So we survive a little longer. Oh, okay. So you just kind of, you have to bid, bid your time or whatnot. So that's awesome. So if me and you sat down to play bunny stasis, what's my turn going to look like? Or... So your turn is pretty much like this. Uh, each turn you, you start with three cards in your hand. Um, you start, uh, you're, you're given an automatic save card. So you're, it's not like you're immediately out of the game once you uh, go to the final stasis stage. Um, so you draw a card. And then you play a card, and then it goes to your opponent's turn. Um, in your turn, you can play up to nine different cards. Uh, the nine different cards are feed, stress, double stress, uh, double feed, trading lifestyles, uh, hop, which is just another word for skip, uh, reverse, and um, ultimate bunny crisis. Oh, wow. Well, that sounds pretty cool. And then they can either take somebody out. How, how does somebody determine when somebody's out of the game then? You start the game completely. Uh, you have uh, what an aesthetic of a bunny in front of you. There's eight. There's eight characters in the game. Um, once you choose that character, there's four levels to that character, um, and they're all labeled one, two, three, four, or and color coded. So um, the point is to get everybody else to level four. Okay, so you get everybody else to level four, and then. Yeah, and you do that by uh, using the stress cards and the feed stars. So if you stre- if I were, if you had your bunny and um, and I was to play a stress card, you'd just go from one to two, and then on your turn, if you were trying to lower yourself, you'd just play a feed card to yourself, and you'd go from two to one. Okay, and the first person to four, we get to, when you get to four, you lose, or how does that work? You lose. You're out of the game unless you use what we call is is the save card that you're given in the game. It's called the uh, uh, midnight emergency room run card, and it. Uh, if you hit four, you just remove that card from the game and you go all the way back to one. Okay. It sounds like a pretty cool. And I really love the art on the game. It looks pretty cool. Yeah. The art was done by a amazing uh, art artist, uh, Stephanie Brawl. You can see all her work at stephaniebrawl.com. Um, and she did phenomenal work. It's, it's kept to a family friendly game. Um, and, the art, while cutesy, I think relates to pretty much anybody. Anybody that loves bunnies or anything. Yeah, it looks really cool. And yeah, how are the kids involved in helping you plan the game? You know, when you get an idea, you have to test it out. Like nothing, nothing's ever perfect the first run through. So uh, we first started with uh, we got a bunch of you know post post it cards um, and attached them to some of my old uh, Final Fantasy cards, put them in some sleeves, and just started getting the rules correct as far as how the play style would go um would uh certain effects work would certain effects not work would we have to lower the card count number or would we have to add cards in order so that way one side wasn't more lopsided than the other and what are the ages if you don't mind my asking uh the game is played from can be played from seven and up the game is uh it so it could be played one of two different ways and this is the funny part is uh it's a very family friendly game so you can play it with your kids you can know but it's also really good um sometimes if you just want to go out with your friends and you're just hanging out and it's a good drinking game i hate to say that but it's true i've played it with my friends and we've just had a good time because you know you go from hey uh like the first time that you play it everyone wants to play kosher as we say and nobody wants to be the bad guy but then by the second time it's literally like oh no you're gonna get it this time we're coming after you yeah it sounds pretty cool and how old are your kids i have a 15 and a 11 year old so it while developing it like i said i got i got the teenage part and then i got the uh not so teenage part the more kitty part of it um as far as it and then i've had uh testing with buddies that are uh much older and they've they've enjoyed it well, that's pretty cool yeah we do some of the episodes on our podcast with my kids ranging from five all the way up to almost 16 so that's cool that you're able to involve your kids yes and it's it's very good like i said it's a very um it's it's an easy to learn game it's not hard uh i wasn't trying to make this game to be super complicated or, or over um rules that would just make no sense to me i wanted to be make sure that somebody could pick it up in two seconds play it have a great time with it and it just be their little fun game that they could play you know if they sitting in an airport or if they're um you know in between rounds of, of a tcg uh, event that they could just whip out and it's only going to take 10 to 15 minutes to play a full round well that's pretty cool and what did the kids help with the play testing you said yes they did very much so um we did probably gosh 
um, we just enjoyed just playing the game just amongst ourselves uh, hundreds and hundreds of times. Did they ever uh, pull anything out because it just wouldn't work for the game? Did the kids ever point anything out that wouldn't work? Yeah, so when we first got it started testing and as we got out, we found that uh, two things didn't work. One, we started off with that one of the cards was called Trading Lifestyles, and um, you were supposed to switch bunnies completely with somebody else. Um, but we found that trading bunnies completely with somebody else, it just became uh, too much to do. So we actually just switched it where you were just changing numbers. Um, another problem we saw that was happening was at the end of the game, when it just became one-on-one, -on -one, the game would go on a little bit too long. So we just added a new rule at the very end, which was once you ran out of cards from the deck, you just removed two cards. From the deck? Yeah, you would remove two of the feed cards. So that way it would just be that much faster. Oh, okay. Awesome. And then, so that makes, that takes a lot of time off then? It didn't take, it just made it so that way because there's an even amount of feed cards and stress cards. So it just made it so once it was the last two, it was literally, uh, now it became almost like a timer. You only had so many feed cards on the deck. Oh, okay, so an inbuilt timer, that's pretty cool. When it comes to bunny stasis, what are you most proud of, would you say, Irving? Um, I just enjoyed making it with uh, the family, honestly. It was a good time to spend with friends and letting them see, you know, something that I've created come to life. Awesome. And how did you know when it was ready for Kickstarter? I had, I've been actually testing it and uh, working on it for about a year. Um, and when I finally got to the point where I felt like all the rules and everything were intact is when I was ready to go to Kickstarter. And it's pretty much just been me um, working on everything as far as the Kickstarter goes. When it comes to Kickstarter, what would you say you've learned the most so far? Promote, promote, promote. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the There's a lot of games out there, and um, I, I, they're all wonderful games. Like I, I, Every time I see a new Kickstarter show up, I'm amazed about what somebody else is doing. Yeah, that's for sure. Have you played the Kickstarter game? Like, have you backed anything? I backed uh, a couple of the games. Um, the one that, you know, everybody, Explosion, Exploding Kittens was the first one I backed. Um, and that was, what was that, two or three years ago that that came out? Maybe four? Um, but uh, then after that, uh, there was another one that failed, but... That was the last one I did. The hard go, especially with all of the other games that, like you said, are constantly launching. So when it comes to Bunny Stasis, what makes that game pop or stand out as one of my audience should come check out the campaign? And then if they like what they see, go ahead and back it, Irving. Honestly, it's just a simple game that you want to play and that very enjoyable. I think it's the charm of that it's just... Uh, you know, it's family oriented. And I think you can see when you go to the page, you can kind of see and feel it um, from the page that we made. Yeah, for sure. And I, like I said before, I really love the art on the page. It's like, and you said, she, has she made other games or done any other, you said you could see all her artwork on her page? Has she made other games? I'm not sure of. Uh, I know she's done a lot of um, uh, illustrations and artwork for for books and kids books and stuff like that oh cool yeah you can tell in the just looking at the cards and stuff it looks pretty cool that's that's uh, be my favorite part because i haven't played it yet yes yeah, so like, like i said it's the art it, the art is what kicks it out the gameplay is what kind of gets you keeps you going after that cool awesome yeah it looks pretty cool now if somebody wants to go ahead and they they back it and whatnot so you don't over promise and under deliver when would they anticipate getting their game would you say so if they were to to pledge just like normal, um, the expected date would be mid March, which I think is perfect because that leads perfectly to Easter for people that are hoping for a early Easter basket gift. Oh, there you go, and it's got bunnies, so that kind of goes along with the whole Easter thing, huh? Yeah, it does. And then you know, people that love to shop early, this is a perfect item for them. It's something small, it's something easy, and like I said, all kids can learn it. Um, the age is really seven and up, so it's not that hard uh, to put in their basket and then for them to enjoy. And even if they don't like the game, they'll love the artwork that's just basically on it. Yeah, for sure. I haven't heard of an Easter game. I have actually looked it up, and I didn't see many bunny like Easter type games. So, you know, I, maybe people will see this and be like, "Hey, you know, that'd be perfect for, um, you know, my my child or for this person that they wanted for Easter." Well, there you go. And are you the reigning champion at your house? Yes, currently I, I am the bunny stasis champion at my house. Uh, we haven't created a game, but it's the other way around at my house. Well, like even. Like on Super Smash Brothers, my 
um, no, my five, she's five now, but she'll beat me at that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The kids, you know, you, you you start off on top, and then five minutes later, they're taking over, right? Yeah, that's what it seems like. Yeah, but they're really good in the games too. Well, I don't know if anybody about anybody else, but I can't wait to play Bunny Stasis. Hopefully, one of these days. It looks like we have about at the time of recording about three weeks, a little less than three weeks for people to get in on the fun of Bunny Stasis. If they haven't gone over to the page yet, I don't know why they wouldn't have. But what's it going to put them back so they can get their own copy once it's fulfilled? So you're just looking at, so if you just want just the game itself, it's, it's $20 and then there's a $2 uh, shipping charge that we're charging. So $22 will get you the game. And But we're also offering a t-shirt. So if you want the t-shirt, you just offer 20 plus, uh, I think we're charging 15 more for the t-shirt. So 35 for that bundle in itself. And the artwork on the t-shirt, like I said, is really cool. It's limited edition. It's different from the art that's in the game. Um, so it's, it's a good little add-on. Well, that's pretty cool. And I noticed that it's only shipping to certain countries. In case somebody's listening from other countries, what countries will it be shipping to, Irving? We're just shipping to U.S. and Canada. So pretty much just North America. Okay. And we'll be $2 for those in Canada as well? Canada, we're just charging $4. That's it. Four dollars. Okay, well, awesome. And if somebody is listening and they like it, and they're from another country, is there any way? How? What would they? What would you recommend to them? They could send me a message, and I could check the shipping charges, and we could come to some see if I could possibly do it. But unless the shipping cost was less than what it would cost, then there would just be no way. Okay, so there might be a possibility. So that's awesome. So yeah, anybody listening, go ahead and definitely jump on over to Kickstarter. We'll leave the links in the show notes so they can check it out and check out Bunny Stasis and see if it be a game that you can get behind. Like I said, and like we've said several times, especially just even for the art. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Now we don't want to keep you all night, but we really appreciate you coming on Getting Geeky with Game Relief with us, Irving, to talk all about Bunny Stasis that'll be on Kickstarter through the 10th of february yeah thank you for having me on and i appreciate just anybody listening no problem we really appreciate it as well irving i don't know about y'all but i really enjoyed that conversation i had with irving once again a reminder if you like that interview and the game we talked about or any of the games mentioned before the interview make sure you click the links in our show notes to show a little bit of support to getting geeky with game relief as well as these designers and publishers of games on the kickstarter and i know you're probably all listening to hear who won our email giveaway well there was a couple people that got back to me i'd say it was 10 or less in the emails But I got some great feedback and we had them vote on the giveaway that I'll be doing with the Giveaway Geek and a couple of other content creators. But got some great news. Our lucky winner of one of the games, the winner of the game that she chose is Karsten. So Karsten, if you're listening to Getting Geek with Game Relief, go ahead and send me an email to gamerleaf at gamerleafgo.com. Go ahead in the subject line, go ahead and put giveaway, send me an email, and we'll get that worked out for you. And then you guys want to pay attention to the site, as well as to the Giveaway Geek, as there's another giveaway coming from myself and some other great content creators. As well as from the Imperial Outpost that is located in the Phoenix area. The Phoenix, Arizona area. So if you're ever in the Phoenix area, make sure you go give them a visit. They are very stocked in games and there's a whole room dedicated to gaming. Every time we go in there, they seem to be gaming non-stop. So yeah, definitely go ahead and show a little bit of support to Imperial Outpost who provided us the games for us. We just had our winners from previous last year never got a hold of us. But once again, Karsten, go ahead and send an email to me at GameRelief at GameRelieveGo.com and once again, be on the lookout for what game or games we'll be giving away to one lucky winner slash listener. Anyways, It's our least favorite time, your least favorite time, time for us to get on with our lives, you to get on with yours. But in the meantime, I hope you'll get geeky, stay geeky, and bring others in the geek fold. And like usual, we'll catch you on the flip side. Game Relief out.
Gamer Leaf levels up. Tune in next week to see if Gamer Leaf's luck holds up.